Welcome to the third video in this series. Uh, the first being variables, the second being arrays, and this one being operators. Operators are the things that go between numbers and expressions to specify operations. More simply put, it, it's the thing that allows us to make certain types of variables, numeric variables, do things. We can use addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, so we can use all of the standard mathematical operators, but we can also do less than, equal to, greater than, and then we can join things together and we can do what's called incrementing and decrementing. And so we're going to go over each of these. So you'll see that operators are kind of important just because the fact that if you have variables, that's all great. But one of the most powerful things with PHP in the fact that not only does it work with databases, but think about it in the context of an e-commerce site. You've placed an order for an item. That item is $10. Now you need to add, you, you say, I want two of those items. PHP is going to take care of that by saying take that item's value, so $10, times the quantity and come up with $20. And so imagine if you had to do that all manually. So this is what operators allow us to do. So one of the first things that we need to understand is, is this term called associativity. PHP uses what's called right associativity, meaning that the value that's on the right acts upon the left. Now this shouldn't seem like a very foreign concept because if you think about it, this is basic math. So in this example where it says print, meaning print or echo, so display this, 104 minus 87. Well that number 87 is acting upon that 104. So it's that 87 is being subtracted from 104. And that is our basic math that it is right uh, associated. Likewise, when we are creating variables with their values, the value is assigned on the right and it is assigned to what is to its left, just like what we did above. So just as 87 is subtracted from 104, the number 100 is associated with dollar sign total as the variable. So don't get too hung up on this, but it's just something that's kind of good to know as we move forward. So let's continue on looking at this. In addition to the associativity when we do this, the assignment operator is actually the equal sign. In the case of PHP, the equal sign operator is used to set the expression. It is not used to mean equal to. So we can't really read this as dollar sign total equals 100. And I know this becomes all about semantics, but we can say that the dollar sign total has the value of 100. Yes, I know it sounds almost just like saying it's equal to, but equal to in mathematics, of course, has its own definitions and terms. So if we get, if we think of the variable means that it's related to or is or has the value of that's different than saying it's equal to. Don't get too hung up on these details. These are, are more uh, background pieces in case you hear some of this, but I think it'll be pretty straightforward as we move forward. And we'll talk about what the actual equals if you mean to make this equals this. Some of the core operators are the basic math operators. So we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and those are the symbols that we use to indicate these in our code. So for example, we can actually set our variable as what is referred to as an expression. Up until now, we've looked at strings where it might just be dollar sign total is 4845, and that would just be a numerical value. In this case, we're saying dollar sign total means that it is the number 4845 divided by three. So what the result of that is, is what the value is. So that's referred to as an expression. So let's take a look at an example. I highly encourage you to play around with each of the examples that's presented in this particular video. It's gonna help you understand better what operators are. We will go through an exercise 
And then our, our final lab for this week is going to be using a lot of operators. So I encourage you to work through each of these so you get a better understanding. So in this particular case, we're setting a number of variables. So the first three are pretty straightforward. We're saying that the box height is 10, box width is eight, and the box length is 12. So we're gonna be figuring out some area. So then we set another variable. In this case, it's called box cubic inches. So in this case, we are going to take those three variables, box height times box width times box length. It's going to come up with the number for us. In this case, it's going to take 10 times 8 times 12 because those are the variables that we set. But the cool thing about this variable dollar sign box cubic inches is we could change the values for each of the three variables that it uses and it would calculate that for us anyway because we're using those variables and multiplying their values that they represent. When we get to the next one, dollar sign box cubic feet is, then we take the prior value, whatever the expression was there, the result of that, and divide it by 144 and that'll give us cubic feet. So those are all just the variables. So when we're gonna go, then we echo these couple of statements. So we can say this box is, and it'll come up with box cubic inches. Then we have the word cubic inches, so it's gonna call up that variable. And then in the second line, it's gonna say or, and it's gonna call up the cubic feet and it's gonna come up with the value of that expression and state it in cubic feet. So again, I encourage you to actually type this up and test it out on your web space. So the next set of operators that we have, so those are our mathematic operators. The next set of operators that we have are comparison operators. Now I want you to think back to when you took 103, because in 103 we talked about Boolean expressions, and Boolean just means that you ask some truth questions and it either answers yes or no, true or false, right? Those are the only answers. And we do this in the final Excel project in 103. Well, this is where that also comes in handy. So there's this whole series, and this you can use as a good reference to come back to, to see what these comparison operators symbols look like. So in this case, we're saying if X and Y are equal. So now we're using the mathematical equal. And in this case, we use two equal signs right next to each other. That's what means equal instead of just assigning a value. Then similarly, we move on and say this Boolean statement is true if X and Y are not equal. And not equal is an exclamation point with the equal sign after it, meaning that the two cannot be equal. Then the next few you should be familiar with if X is less than Y or if X is greater than Y. And similar to how we put this in Excel, we're saying if something if X in this case is less than or equal to Y or greater than or equal to Y. So we use these combinations of symbols to compare things to determine if they're true or not. And then later we can then cause certain, we're gonna be creating some functions with some behaviors using things like if and if else. So we could say if something is greater than the other value, do this, else do this. So these are some ways that we use these Boolean comparison operators. Here is an example. And again, this one's kind of nonsensical in and of itself. But what I encourage you to do is to go through this and establish the variables. You can start out with the x equals 5 and y is 10. And then all you're going to do is you're going to echo that x equals whatever the x value is. And you're going to echo or display y and whatever the y value is so that at least they can see what it is. So then it's going to go through each of these if statements. So we're not covering if statements quite yet. So you can just kind of type this up the way it is and we'll get to if statements I believe next week. But anyway what this is saying is if x is less than y in which case this one is because 5 is less than 10 then show or echo it is true that x is less than y. The next one is if x is greater than y, echo, it is true that x is greater than y. Well, in this case, x is not greater than y, so this statement actually just simply would not even show. So that's why I encourage you to go through each of these. Think about which ones would actually appear, you know, which ones are true using the variables that you provided, and so change that 5 and 10 to something else. Make x so that it's greater than y. 
and see what happens. The next thing that we have to consider, and this is math, or at least it relates to math. In math, we have this thing called precedence, and it's the order in which we do certain calculations. The way PHP code and our computers are programmed is it follows that same precedence. So taking a look at this little equation, 8 plus 2 times 4. Think about this and maybe pause this video and come up with your own answer, and then you can continue on. So which one do you think is correct? Is it 40 or is the answer 16? And then think about why. If you were to answer 40 in this, you would be incorrect. And here's why. If you remember back to math, the standard order of operation is you do any multiplication and division first, followed by addition and subtraction. So as I just stated, the rules of math hold true in the scripting and programming languages as well, and that's how our computers will process the information. So now if we go back to this, and I ask you again, what is 8 plus 2 times 4? Answer is 16 because we do the multiplication or division, in this case it's multiplication, first. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8, and then we do the addition or subtraction, and in this case it's addition, so it becomes 8 plus 8, so we have 16. If we want to override that, we can use parentheses. So again, just like in math, if we put parentheses around certain numbers or certain parts of our equations, those are the ones that get done first, regardless of whether they are addition or subtraction, multiplication or division. So let's take a look at the same equation, but with parentheses. In this case, we now have 8 plus 2 in parentheses, and then we multiply by 4. The parentheses in this case means they take precedent. We do that first. So in this case, is it 40 or is it 16? Well, this time the answer is 40. And that's because we do the 8 plus 2 first because it's between parentheses. So that gives us 10. And then we do the multiplication. So in this case, 8 plus 2 is 10 times 4 is 40. So here is a practical example of how to do this. And this is going to be very similar to what you're going to be doing in the lab for this week. So you're going to be thinking about this with precedence. So in this case, we are doing just a quick um, like shopping cart example. So we have items 1, 2, and 3. They each have a value to them. We have sales tax, which has a value, and shipping, which has a value. So then we create this other variable called order total. And in order total, we say item 1 plus item 2 plus item 3, and that's in parentheses. So we would add 20 plus 10 plus 15 first, then multiply it by the sales tax, and then add the shipping. So I encourage you to do this code that's showing here and save it and upload it to your web space and see if your calculations match with what comes up. And if it doesn't, try and figure out why. When it comes to operators, these two are the most difficult to wrap our brains around, or at least they have been for me. It is the idea of increment and decrement. Increment is two plus symbols next to each other, and decrement is two minus symbols. Increment and decrement really, it only affects numbers and strings. It does not affect arrays and objects, which we aren't even covering objects, but it doesn't affect arrays, and we did go through that. There are two different types of increment. We're going to start there. Increments basically means you're going to add one to whatever the variable is. But there's two different types. One is called a pre-increment. It's noted because the two plus symbols fall before the variable. Then there's the post-increment where the plus symbols are after the variable. And what they each mean, pre-increment means that it increments that value that's associated with the variable a by one and then returns what that number is. If we do a post increment, it's going to return the a value first, so it would return 5, and then it's going to increment it by 1. This is one that I really encourage you to go through. What's going to happen is we're just going to say 
a equals 5. A pre-increment increments first and then gives you the a value. So if a equals 5, in our first statement we are pre-incrementing it, meaning it's adding 1 to it before it even returns that value. So it should be the number 6. And just to prove that, then we show just the straight up a variable. It takes on that new number, so it should also be 6. And because it was 6, and we pre-increment it again, it should return it as 7, and in the next one it should return it as 8. This is where it will become more clear. Let's look at the post increment. We have the same a variable, in this case the value is 5 again, but we're going to do the a with the pluses after it, and it's going to be 5. It's going to return 5 to us. Whereas in this one, where we pre-increment it, it returns 6. So then the next time a shows up, because it increments it afterwards, so in the first instance it was 5, the next time it's going to show 6 when we just look at a. I encourage you to go through this in both cases and extend them beyond what I've shown. So for example in this pre-increment after echo should be 8, just do an echo should be 8 and do the, the dollar sign a. Don't even increment it and see if that's the case. Do the next echo statement in this sequence. So in the variable in this case it will just be dollar sign a and take a guess as to what you think it will be, and then run the code and see if you're right. So if you thought that was confusing, now let's look at decrement. Decrement is basically the same thing, but we're doing subtraction instead of addition. So we again have pre-decrement and post-decrement. Does the same exact thing. In this case, it'll take that variable, it'll subtract one from it, and then return what that new number is. If you do the post-decrement, the first time that it shows, it's just going to return the actual a value. So it's just going to return 5. But then if you run the a value again, it's going to show it as 4. It'll decrement it afterwards. So similarly, here is the code. So you can see that there are four blocks of code. There's pre and post increment and pre and post decrement. Just like the increment, I encourage you to go through this and take a guess and see if you're right every time that this new line of code shows up. So you can do these one by one. So you could do echo should be 4 and you could pre-decrement this and see if it comes up as 4. And then you can run it where it's just the variable a and see if you're correct. And likewise then there's the post decrement which is going to do that same thing that the post increment did but we're subtracting. So again go through each of these four pieces and really work through them because I think then you'll understand this math. It's kind of complicated to describe, but it makes more sense when you're actually doing this. So run through these examples and, and I think it'll help you understand it better. The last thing that we are going to cover, because if you remember, operators are expressions that go between numbers that connect them in some way or change the end result, the last one is called concatenating. Personally, I think that's a really fun word to say. It just means to, to link or to join things together. In programming or scripting, it's basically just an operation of joining a couple of character strings together. So in this example, without showing any code, just the statement of saying the concatenation of snow and ball is snowball, because we are joining those two strings of alphabetical characters together. Let's take a look at how we actually do this. How we concatenate, for example, we have two variables, a first name and a last name. We have assigned them each uh, strings in this case, so they're all alphabetical strings, uh, and we have a first and last name of an author. So in this case we do echo, so we are going to display this on our screen, and we're going to say echo the first name, and so it'll pull Neil, then we put a period followed by a quotation mark. And then in that base, there is actually a space, because if you didn't do this, the words Neil Gaiman would be all smashed together and form one word. So we concatenate them by putting that period, a quotation, and then whatever is between our quotation marks is going to display. In this case, it's just a space. So this is going to echo first name, so Neil, space, last name. 
And then after we're finished with that, we are going to put a period and another set of quotation marks, and it's going to display exactly what's between the next set of quotation marks, which is, is an author. And then we end it with our semicolon. So in this case, it's just simply going to read, Neil Gaiman is an author. We're going to get lots of practice with concatenating, because that is in the exercise that I have at the end of this. We will begin uh, looking at exercise three.